it's from Sherwin. And this question, if I'm not mistaken, actually links up with the question that Solna was going to pose to you by Janine. So okay. I'll read Janine's question and then go on to Sherwin's. And then maybe Bruno and yourself can tackle this as well. Janine's question says, I recently bought a house and within two days of moving in, had, a blo had blocked kitchen drains to the extent that the kitchen cupboards are extensively damaged. The plumbers found incorrectly laid plumbing in addition to excessive fat clogging the drainage pipes throughout the kitchen. She wants to know, can I claim the costs for the plumber to unblock drains and also claim costs for the repair of the damaged cupboards? There was a bottle of drain cleaner in the cupboard and when I moved in, so the previous owner must have known about the problem. That's what she's saying. And then Sherman's question says, how long does a buyer have to act on defects after they've bought a property? So I'm going to stay clear away from the specific details because, uh, you know, I'm going to come back to uh, trivialities and costs and things like that. So typically speaking, when a person buys a property, if the owner is aware of any, uh, any defects in that property, they have to disclose it. Uh, under, all, uh, under our law, the way that it was, the way that it is, PPA, it's never changed, right? Uh, being aware of defects requires the owner to disclose it. Not disclosing it, omitting it is in itself uh, a misrepresentation and the purchaser is entitled to claim from the owner of the property. Typically, you tend to find it with larger defects, so things like damp or cracks that you paint over or issues with ceilings or trusses or the like. I mean, Mauritius run me through so many scenarios that my head's spinning. And, and the, the purchaser in those situations can cancel the deal if they haven't taken transfer. If they have taken transfer, something less a serious would be to claim damages. Uh, sometimes if the purchase price hasn't been paid over, you can uh, claim a reduction of the purchase price. Uh, that's the long and short of, of the defect situation. Um, the, the lower the, the amount or value of the defects, uh, the, the harder it actually is to claim back sometimes because uh, sellers don't want anything to have to do with, with, with the purchaser. Uh, and then you have to sue and try and actually claim these monies back. Uh, and if the amounts are very small, like under 15,000, I'd probably often suggest that you go to small claims court. But to answer the question, yeah, this seems quite clear that, um, you know, you would be able to claim against the seller. Insofar as time periods are concerned, uh, it's when you actually discover the defect. The reality is if the defect wasn't discoverable and it's, uh, I'll give you an example. We had, we had a case where a person bought a property during winter. Um, everything was fine during summer, during the raining, a rainy season, they realized that the property was on panhandle, completely flooded up against the door, uh, that the foundations were already being worn away. It was seeping into the house. And it appeared that this was a common thing that happened every summer uh, during the rainy season. Uh, but it was months after they had bought it. But obviously, they wouldn't have known until summer came along. So that is still a defect. And that is still something that, in terms of the contract, you can uh, go after the seller for. Can I can I be the uh, the other other side in this conversation? Um, no. the, just on the the Bruno, I agree with you 100% on everything except the kind of damage that we're seeing here and kind of defect. If it is in fact the case that the plumbing is weirdly done and something is wrong on the plumbing, and the seller had knowledge of that, I agree with you 100%. However. I think there's a massive difference between defective plumbing, which you can claim, and a fat blockage. Because remember, fat um, will block a drain every every day of the week. And I don't know about you, but um, sort of standard issue, uh, uh, I'm looking again from, from tenant side and tenant drain management. You do expect a tenant to do regular drain cleaning and things like that, because fat does tend to build up. Uh, whether, so, disgustingly enough, obviously you expect fat in a kitchen sink. Unfortunately, fat builds up in uh, your basins and your baths and your showers because um, people 
have a lot of fat on their skin and oil and stuff and it clogs drains like that much um especially if you throw hair into the mixilla oh, this is why i'm not a plumber this crushes me out <laughs> but um it happens often and i've seen quite a few cases where a tenant takes occupation two three four days after they took occupation whoops uh, suddenly there's a drain drama and that is actually something that you can expect in a property it could happen it doesn't necessarily mean that the plumbing is defective so what i am trying to say is it could very well be the case but just make sure you don't go in all guns blazing against the cellar and actually it was a natural thing that a property does and you might need to clean the drain anyway so drain cleaner in a basin is um, something that should happen anyway on at least a monthly basis in on the go property maintenance so um that's not necessarily a smoking gun it's probably like finding handy andy and the kitchen sink doesn't mean um, that the guys had a massive body. It means they were good cleaners. So I'm just saying before you go all guns blazing, just make sure it's not just um, uh, somebody that cooked the leg of lamb and now there's a lot of oil clogging the drain. And I'm sorry, I'm gaggy while I'm trying to answer the question.